What's up superstars, it's Phil here. And today's video, we're gonna be diving deep into the world of DTF printing. In this tutorial, we're not just making any ordinary graphic print, we're transforming this piece of AI generated artwork into an incredible lightweight t-shirt transfer. So let's get right into it. Let's talk about this design. This isn't just any artwork, it's been generated with a little help from AI software called Mid Journey. But let's be clear, we're not selling this, we're just using this for our tutorial today. First off, this artwork is a solid artwork with a predominant background, which is nice and thick here. Which technically is printable, but it isn't ideal for DTF printing because it's gonna print as this large box image and it's gonna be very thick and heavy in the front. So our goal here is to make this print as light as possible for a comfortable wear. And this is what we're trying to achieve. This piece is perfect for what we're trying to do because it is nice, vibrant, and it has a lot of black in the image. So when we knock out the black and we're gonna use our t-shirt for the background, it's gonna again, gonna be very nice, lightweight, breathable. It is perfect for DTF. So you wanna follow through as I walk you guys through every step in this process. And if you guys watch till the end, I'm actually gonna be giving out this free t-shirt. So you wanna watch till the end, I'm gonna give you guys some details into that giveaway. Good morning, everyone. I'm John, and I'm a resident graphic designer for Transfer Superstars. Today, I'm going to show you how to achieve a blackout effect with a half tone. So first things first, we're going to be using this design. Let's check the file, and it has a black background or something like a dark blue. However, it has a background that wouldn't go well into DTFs. So what we need to do is remove all those and still try to keep all these other effects right here and maintain as much detail as possible. And as you can also see, if I zoom in, the artwork kind of looks pixelated and we'll also have to fix that. In fixing that, we'll need help from a tool called Nightmare AI, and I'm going to show you how to use it in a bit. The file size is 13 by 16.6, and it's 72 DPI. What we really need is 300, and even if we turn it up right now, it still wouldn't look good. As you can see, it's still pretty pixelated, and since the source file is being upscaled, not properly. This is when we need to do the upscaling. So what you're going to need to do is log in to replicate.com slash nightmare.ai. In here, as you can see, it's pretty simple. All you need to do is drag your file in here and what you need is an account on GitHub and sign in to the website using GitHub. It's basically free. There are upgrades and subscriptions you can make, but you can do pretty much everything freely as long as it's not a very heavy file. So let's try to drag our file right here, and it is now right here. This is how big you want to scale it, so I'm going to try around five times. So let's scale it up five times. And it is still loading. It might take a while. It depends on the image and how big you want it to be scaled to. It took 13 seconds. It shows how long it generated the image, but there's no error, so it should appear right now. And here it is. It's looking pretty good. You can scroll it right here to see the difference, and the difference is pretty visible. I mean, the new one looks clear and the old one's pretty much blurry. We'll download this now. Now, just under the image, there's a download button, and it's pretty simple. We'll have to go back to Photoshop and download, open the file that we got, and yeah, it now looks pretty good. But it's still in 72 DPI, but it doesn't matter since we are going to be downscaling it now instead of upscaling it since it's around 66 inches. So let's say we need a 13 inch width for the print. And when you downscale, this is where you enter the resolution together so that it keeps high quality resolution even after you downscale it. 
it looks pretty decent and better than what we have before. So now the next thing we need to do is to duplicate the layer. You can go and right click duplicate layer. In the document destination, you can go and select OK. You can put any name you want, but in this case, I'm not putting anything since it's not pretty crucial. Let's press OK. When you do that, it creates a new tab of the same artwork and in the new tab that we created. This is where we are going to do some edits and go to Mode and click on Grayscale. And just as a side note, it's pretty important that we're doing it on already 300 DPI artwork since we already changed it earlier. But just to make sure we are on the same page since it would really matter a lot in the later phases of this artboard. And then let's go turn the grayscale and something like this will pop up, discard color information. And what we do this is we kind of turn it back. But of course, this is just a duplicate and we have the original file right here. After we do that, we need to go to image adjustment and levels. And what we're doing now is highlighting the parts that we want to keep and the black areas are going to get removed. While the white areas are going to stay and those gray areas. They're going to be the ones that become a halftone effect and you want to choose a very specific selection for this. The values can be different for each image, but let's do this. It looks pretty good. Let's try to keep it very close to black and white and just keep the gray to minimal and press OK. And after that, get to mode again. Click on bitmap flatten layers and 300 dpi pixels per inch and go to the halftone effect. There are a few effects with here, but what we need is to have a halftone screen. Click OK, and in the frequency, a very normal number of frequency would be around 20 to 40. But for this artwork, let's try to see what looks, what the halftone looks in high or low frequency. So let's see it start at 20 and the angle should be 22 and it's round. Click OK. It doesn't really change much, but if you look closely, there are now circles and patterns inside the artwork that weren't there before, as you can see right here. This is what they have to us, and this one is set to 20. Let's click Ctrl Z and let's try again, and let's use a higher frequency like 35. And the artwork already actually has some halftone effect on it, so it's not pretty visible, but the higher the frequency, the smaller the patterns are. It would really depend on what you need, so I think this looks pretty good. Let's click Ctrl A and Ctrl C to copy. Let's go back to the other tab and click on this layer mask icon. Let's make a duplicate just in case we mess something up and we'll always have a copy of the original file. Go on to the layer mask, click out and last click, then face it right there. Then click Ctrl D and show the artwork. Show the layer and now it looks like this. Every black in the artwork has been taken out and all the stuff are the colors and every layer that is not at 100% opacity has become a halftone. It might look pretty weird, but if you put it in a solid black background or even not an entirely black background, it would look like this. So it does make sense. I mean, it doesn't even have to be like a very black background. It can even be like this. So you can place it on any types of shirt that has a dark color in it, not just like white colors because it would look weird. So we would really prefer to use a black color as a shirt. The background now becomes a shirt, of course. So we're gonna need a dark toned shirt for this one to work. So it doesn't have to be plain black. 
So save it in 13 by 17 inches and in PDF format. PDFs are pretty great since they give a very high quality, and before saving, we also need need to remove the edges of the artwork by going on ALT plus I plus R. Trim the transparent pixels just to remove all the empty spaces in the artwork and keep it as clean as possible. Then save it to a PDF format, and that's pretty much it. What's up superstars, it's Phil here. Welcome back, thank you for following along on our tutorial where we knock out the black on this artwork and created a beautiful transfer like this where the black's knocked out and it's gonna be super lightweight. And as I promised you guys in the earlier part of the video, we're actually gonna be pressing this onto a t-shirt as well as giving the t-shirt away for free. So you make sure you guys watch to the very end. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get this heat press done or heat pressing done. Now I'm gonna talk about what we're gonna be using today. We're gonna to be using a fancier studio heat press that we got off of Amazon. We just did a product review, so make sure you guys watch that video in case you guys have not yet. Um, but this is a fancier studio. Again, we like this because it has a pullout, makes things a little bit easier. But again, watch the video for more information on that. Let's go ahead and go to uh, the project and what we're gonna be doing today. So we're gonna be pressing onto a canvas Three zero Canva, uh, Bella Canvas 3001. It's a black unisex shirt. Let's go ahead and do some measurements before we get to the pressing. All right, so for the 3001 here, large shirt, we've got a width from the armpit to armpit about 21 inches. From bottom to the top seam, I've got about 24 and a half inches. And a super soft, if you guys haven't touched Bella Canvas t-shirts before, make sure you guys give that a shot. So again, let's go ahead and pull this out, get this ready. I've already got the heat press fired up to 300 degrees. And again, the pull out, I kind of did that quick, but it pulls out so it has some extra room for you to load your t-shirts in. And I'm gonna go ahead and just align it. It makes things a lot easier to align as well than to have to go align already there. Plus it gives you much extra room up top right there. So it's set up. Let's gonna go ahead and do a pre-press. Okay, so now that it's pre-pressed, we're gonna go ahead and load up our graphic. So we're gonna go ahead and actually fold this in half Give it a quick crease. This way I'll have the midpoint of where the graphic's gonna be at. And I'm gonna use my four fingers right here. So that gives me roughly about three inches. I'm gonna line myself up to the top of the graphic, which is right here. And so roughly that's about centered. And then next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure that my fingers are gonna be even on the sides. And then I'm gonna go ahead and align that up. So I'm gonna take the furthest point of the graphic right there. And that's about straight for me. And then now that everything is, is uh, aligned and centered, we're gonna go ahead and push it back into place, making sure that every point of the graphic is gonna be under the heat press. And let's go ahead and press. Oops, sorry about that. Almost forgot our Teflon sheet. So make sure you apply that on there. Press. Seven seconds, 300 degrees, heavy pressure. Timer's off, go ahead and pop it up. Now since we did a black knockout here and there's a lot of little, little details, I definitely recommend getting a microfiber cloth and just rubbing through the details. You wanna try to get as much of the details to transfer through. So that always helps to use a cloth to press the transfers down. And now we're gonna let this cool down for a bit. All right, this is the moment we've been waiting for. We're gonna go ahead and peel our transfers. This is incredibly exciting for us or me personally because it's a black knockout. So it is always nice or great to see the after effect of how it looks when you take out the black and then you just have the colored prints on there. So we're gonna go ahead and hold the shirt down with one hand, grab the transfer, peel. And let's go ahead and do a second press. 
Oops, press it in. All right, guys, let's pull this out. Let's take a look. Well, first of all, let's take a look at it right here because if I was to hold it, you're gonna see some shakingness. But you guys can see that there's vertical lines that run across the transfer. Again, this shows that there is enough pressure on the heat press, so that's a good sign. But the main reason we're here is to check out the artwork and the design. You see how the black was knocked out and all you can see is the color here. This makes for a very, very lightweight t-shirt, yet it's still very vibrant and it, it holds true to all the details that you're looking to accomplish with this. Let us know again, guys, what you guys think about this artwork. And again, if, if you follow along since the beginning, you guys know that we're gonna be giving out this large Canva 3001. We're gonna switch things up a little bit on this giveaway. I want you guys to drop a comment below with where you guys are from and also what artwork program you guys are using, whether it's Photoshop, Illustrator, um, Canva, whatever you guys are using, drop a comment below with where you guys are from and then I will do a giveaway in about two weeks. So again, guys, let me know what you guys also think. I'm Phil. Catch you guys on the next one, guys.